Welcome to the all new Print Reading for Construction textbook video training series. My name is Dan Dorfmiller, the author and the instructor for this training. The video series is an overview of the material in each unit, and each unit includes the answers to the questions at the end of the unit. This video includes Unit 1, Construction Drawing Organization, and Unit 4, Lines and Symbols. Unit 1 and 4 are free. Free so you can sample the video content. The remainder unit videos are offered at a discounted price of $299, a $599 value. And this will include all the remainder videos for the textbook as they become available in the near future. The current video units available are a combination of Unit 1, Construction Drawing Organization, and Unit 4, Lines and Symbols, the one you're watching, and eight more separate videos for Unit 2, Construction Math and Application, Unit 3, Reading Measuring Tools, and scales with emphasis on learning to read an architect and engineer's scale, unit 6 specifications and building codes, unit 7 construction materials types and uses with much more than is in the book, unit 8 site plans, unit 9 architectural drawings, unit 10 foundation prints, and unit 11 structural prints that include some additional information. Remember, as the remainder of the new videos come out, you will receive them free. Don't forget the textbook. The videos complement the textbook information in each unit, along with the opportunity to test your knowledge at the end of each unit using 140 large prints to study with. The book sells for $120 and includes free shipping in the United States. Go to the www.printreading.us website to order your book today. And lastly, before we get into the training, if your company has a corporate print reading for construction video training series license, please contact your company's director of education or HR department for the corporate code. And if you need a textbook, you can order on my website. Okay, back to the video training. Hello, I'm Dan, the author. Thank you for signing up for this training series. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. In this unit, you will learn why drawings are important to the construction industry, what is included in a set of construction drawings, describe how drawings and prints are made, and how to handle prints properly. Construction drawings are used to communicate the architectural, engineering, plumbing, electrical, and HVA design of the project. They include specifications, materials, and methods of construction. Information is communicated using drawings. A print is a copy of a drawing, and for many years we called this a blueprint, white lines on a blue background, and today it is typically dark lines or colored lines on a light background. On small construction projects, all necessary information for the construction is usually included on a single plan drawing, elevations, and detail drawings. On large projects, drawings make it up a set of construction documents are typically organized in sections and have a letter identification for each section. Letter classifications specified in the uniform drawing system include the following. The most common are highlighted in blue. G for general, C for civil, L for landscaping, S for structural, A for architectural, F for fire protection, P for plumbing, M for mechanical, and E for electrical. Each section is then further divided using numbers. Zero for general, one for plans, two for elevations, three for sections, and so on to nine for 3D views. This index can be found on the title page of the construction documents, along with the date each page has been issued or changed.
The most common types of prints found in a set of construction documents are site plans, floor plans, elevations, sections, and details. Site plans are the areas of the project outside the building structure, as seen here, the parking lot, street easements, and walkways. They are identified using the letter C. Architectural plans are designated with the letter A, as seen here with the floor plan and elevations. Structural floor framing plans are designated with a letter S. Sections are used to show how the building goes together and can be found in all sections of the construction documents. Here we are looking at a full stair section, which also used to reference more detail sections, floor and landing elevations. As we look closer and closer into a detail, the Im building information becomes more and more detailed. Schedules are used to combine lots of information into one place for reference, as seen here in this room finish schedule, identifying each room in the building with a number and a name. This door schedule using the room numbers from the finish schedule to identify each of the doors in the building. Schedules are used in all disciplines for gathering information. On large construction projects, these large sheet size touchscreens are used to keep track of the construction documents, changes to the drawings, and notes for the project. The files are kept in a cloud-controlled site by the architect and or construction manager, so the construction team, subcontractors, and material suppliers have real-time project access to the current information. A few words on properly handling prints. Never write on them unless authorized to make changes. Keep prints clean. They need to last the entire job. Do not eat or drink near the prints. This should be obvious. Always fold or roll prints carefully. I prefer rolling prints inward, so when unrolled, they don't curl up. Do not lay sharp objects on prints, again obvious. Keep out of direct sunlight, sun will fade the drawings. And most importantly, store in a clean, dry place. Careers in construction. The construction manager is an experienced professional who manages and coordinates the entire construction project, the many people on the team, including subcontractors and material suppliers. Traditionally, a construction manager comes through the building trades by becoming a skilled worker in a specific occupation or has graduated from a college offering construction management degrees. In almost all cases, the construction manager will have on-the-job experience with additional education. Construction drawings create a lot of paper with the use of CAD, computer-aided drawing, and BIM, business information model, and cloud sites, much of this paper can be eliminated. Remember, when learning to read construction documents, you must first visualize the project and then learn to interpret the information. It all starts with a mind's eye view, then read the drawings and start to construct the structure, no matter what you're building, even a Lego model. If you get it wrong, it could look like this. Pause the video here and review the material in Unit 1, then answer the questions. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and review the answers. I'm not going to read them all out. This completes Unit 1. Next is Unit 4, Lines and Symbols. Unit 4 learning objectives, identifying common types of lines used on prints, identifying features from different lines and match drawing symbols to their meaning. Reading construction prints begins with understanding the types of lines and symbols that appear on drawings. Architects and engineers use defined systems of lines and symbols. Typical lines on a drawing are border lines framing in the edge of the drawing sheets, a property line used to find plot lines for property edges, object lines used for indicating the edges 
of a solid object, like these walls. Hidden lines are used in two ways. One to show the edge of an object above, like the edge of this mezzanine above the first floor, or to show hidden lines under an object, like the footing in the ground. Center lines are used to define column lines. They are usually one of the faintest lines on the drawings. Dimension lines are also faint and used to define all the layout of the building materials. Section cutting lines are used to indicate locations of section cuts in the building materials and also through the entire building. The top letter indicates the section cut and the bottom number indicates the page in which the section can be found on. On large projects, there will be hundreds and maybe, maybe even thousands of details. In addition to various types of lines, an extensive amount of symbols are used in construction drawings. These symbols represent items, products, and references to notes. An example would be a designer using the recessed light fixture to indicate these lights in this corridor. There are many types of symbols for all the different trades, lighting, plumbing, electrical, and site landscaping plans. The lines or symbols can mean different things based on the trades they are representing. For instance, dashed line on an architectural and structural drawings would mean a hidden line, but on the site plan, it means existing contours. Materials can also appear differently depending on how they are shown in section or elevation. Most construction documents will have a legend defining the materials used in the drawings as shown here. Abbreviations are used to shorten commonly used words and should be standard for a set of drawings. Typically, a list will be, in, a list will be included on most construction drawings on the title page or general notes. Becoming familiar with abbreviations is important in saving time reading drawings. Also refer to reference section 7 of the book for a comprehensive list. Some examples of common abbreviations are ACT for acoustical tile, JCJ for construction joint, CLG for ceiling, FTN for foundations, and real common on drawings, TYP for typical, UNO unless otherwise noted. Both of these, TYP and UNO, need to be paid a special attention to when estimating on a project. More on estimating in Unit 17. How to find information on the drawings. First, review the title sheet. Then it's my recommendation to flip through the entire set of drawings. Yes, I know that's a lot of work, but that's what I do, uh, and I always do it. Next, tag out the pages you have uh, information on that you are interested in if you're a subcontractor or key pages in if you are a general contractor. Begin to highlight or color areas of interest or the scope of work. Pause here and in the space provided, draw the various lines freehand. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Again, pause the video and review the answers. Pause the video here and write in the name of each symbol indicated on pages 67 and 68. Refer to the reference section 7 in the textbook for the correct symbols. When complete, continue, to continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video as needed to review the answers. This completes Unit 4 and this video. Please visit the www.printreading.us website to purchase the remainder of the videos and the Print Reading for Construction textbook. Mm -hmm.